Hi and welcome back to my channel. Now we're doing a bedroom renovation on this one. Now, I'm home from Christmas. It's actually going to be my own bedroom. There's a lot of work to do here. So we're going to just go through a couple of things that we're going to be doing here. And we're going to do this video in God knows how many parts because there's going to be a lot of construction. There's going to be some built-in wardrobes. There's going to be a, a lovely dressing table with shaker MDF panels on there. And we're going to do, you know, I mean, all my own designs. So, yeah, stay tuned. So in this video, we're going to be removing this bloody horrible Artex on the ceiling. Now, there's loads of ways of going about this. People like to overboard it. I know I do personally most of the time. I overboard it. My plaster comes in. He plasters their job done. Forgotten about but I don't want to overboard, I want to try and keep this cove in. I'm looking at it now, mine will probably end up ripping it down. But we're going to use a steamer. We're going to set the steamer up now. We're going to steam the Artex off to save on the dust because it's very hazardous. You've got to be so careful with this stuff. It'd be all right with this. I don't know what the state of the ceiling is going to be like underneath because we've got a big crack running through here. So we're going to show a bit of filler in on there and what it's going to look like at the end. So wish me luck, I'm going to set the steamer up now and I'm going to start scraping this off. Right, we had to stop the steaming because what I found was is the layer of paint on the actual ceiling itself, uh, it had mat on there, but underneath it had a silk paint, so the steamer would not touch it. And the reason for that was is because the top paint, the coat that was on there now was a mat, but underneath we had a silk paint, so the steamer wasn't touching it. I didn't want to go scoring the ceiling crazily and leaving loads of marks to sand off, so I'd basically got a filler knife, which is a very fine blade, and it's just getting under the Artex, look, I can show you, and it's scraping off lovely now at the moment. Well, I say lovely, there are some areas that's really hard to do, but... Uh, Apart from that, it's going well. I'm wearing a mask. I got my Festool dust extractor on my shoulder as well. I'm holding hard to try and suck up any dust because underneath the Artex, then you have this distemper, which is a lime. So you don't want to be breathing that in either. Uh, I don't recommend doing this. Uh, you want to get it tested first and uh, go from there, really. But uh, as this is uh, the house I'm living in, it's, uh, it's something I'm willing to have a go at doing. Uh, and trying to eliminate all the dust and uh, trying to do it as safe as possible for your health. So this is a little update of where we're at on this ceiling. Now, as you can see, we have sanded that area and taken all the distemper off the ceiling. And if I just put all my camera like this, now you can see all the rest of the Artex that needs to be removed. Now, there are some cracks in the ceiling, which I'm gonna deal with. Like I said, this is only my own ceiling. Um, by removing this Artex now, I've either got an option, if I really want to plaster it, I can, because I can put the PVA on the ceiling and the new plaster will bond to that. I know loads will say, blue gritter, you'll be fine, blah, 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 but I've seen them drop, and uh, this is where we're at, which I think is looking pretty bloody good. I'd just like to point out that when you're actually sanding these ceilings, all right, if you're using a sander like a Rotex, which isn't designed to be used overhead, all right, 
the way it spins you got to make sure you have the sander in one direction because it'll throw all the crap in your face you want to be careful of that so pick a lightweight sander i do like the delta the first tool delta it's a great sander it's light you can use it overhead it's not a problem but apart from that i think we're looking good in here so there's not a lot i can do if i am inhaling some of this dust i know it's hazardous but i will mention i worked for a guy for five years and we scraped bloody ceilings i knew nothing about the uh, rtx and what's in there obviously with asbestos and whatnot so wearing a dust mask and doing this with a dust extractor now i've obviously inhaled this dust over the years so i haven't got nothing to lose of i so that's why i am doing it basically but i don't recommend this for people to do but if you want to know how to do it this is how i do it So we're just about to start day two now of stripping the Artex off the ceiling. I only done about three hours, maybe three and a half hours yesterday. And um, we got as far as there. So we're way over halfway. I do need to sand this distemper off the ceiling. It's a lime based wash they put on them after uh, plastering, oddly. But we have got a plastered ceiling under there. And I think we'll have a nice bit of sand then bit of paint it should come up lovely so stay tuned and we'll show you what we're doing on the next phase So we're at the final stages of removing this Artex off the ceiling now. I've got another bit to do, which I'm going to finish off today. I've been taking my time as it's the Christmas holidays and I'm trying to relax as well on top of doing this bedroom out. But as I mentioned before, the best way to remove this is with a steamer and score it and steam it to get rid of it, obviously, because it contains asbestos. Now, this Artex was laid after 2000 so i know i'm pretty safe for this and i know it probably doesn't contain asbestos so i've been taking my time using dust extraction to sand off some of the lime wash that's underneath there and uh, obviously uh, we're shooting everything up and going from there so this is the stuff a lot of plasters have nightmares with see above my head that's the distemper the lime wash now, when plasters plaster over Artex, what happens is, is the Artex sucks the moisture of the plaster in and then it delaminates off the actual seal and it pulls away because this surface left up here right now, this surface is a dusty surface. Now, the best way, obviously, to remove lime, if you are removing it, is to wash it off with water and uh, it can get messy. But I just thought I can sand it off of the dust extraction. I'm um, having minimal dust in here, which is great. I'm wearing a mask, obviously, so I don't want to inhale any of this lime either. And with the Artex, the dust off that. Um, obviously, with this video, like I've said to you, I'm just showing you how I do it. I don't recommend using this method. But if you're in a situation like myself, where I can't board the ceilings because the weather outside is hammering down with rain, I got a small van so I can't transport the plasterboard yeah, without getting it wet. Uh, this is the only option I'm left with. But it's coming along as I've shown. I'll carry on with the video now and show you how I'm going ahead and how I'm going to finish it off. Uh, there'll be some coving going up, some built-in wardrobes on this job. A resin table with shaker doors and everything being made. So there's plenty for you to watch. So I hope you're going to like this video. I don't know if you will or not. Uh, there's going to be loads of haters in the comments. Why are you doing this? Why are you showing this? I'm just showing you how I'm dealing with this problem that I've got in my house and how I'm going to get over it.
So here we are with the ceiling. Looking good, if I do say so myself. Got some cracks to sort out now, which we're going to do in another video, show you how we deal with them. And what I found was the plaster was bloody awful. It had bumps, lumps, all sorts of nonsense all over it. So all I've done is sanded it nice and flat. We haven't hit the plasterboard. There's a couple of spots where I have. I'll show you how I'm going to sort all that out. And you can see that on the next video. So this is how I remove our tax. Don't do it very often. Don't like touching the stuff. I don't trust it. But as I said, I knew that this stuff was laid after 2000. So there's a good chance there's no asbestos in there. And that's the results.